Gracias. Director of Waxwork. Waxwork 2. Lost in Time. We burned that place down to the ground. Nothing could have escaped that inferno. I just hope you're right. When the mayhem ended... You said it was over! You said it was over! Their adventure began. You're going to need all the help you can get if you want to continue the fight against evil. Just follow Alice through the looking glass. Trapped in a terrifying journey through time. When you first used Solomon's Locket, you opened a doorway to another universe, a place where the true battle between good and evil is played out for eternity. Caught between the forces of darkness and light. God wants me to be a time warrior? The master is no mortal. He is the devil himself. No. To get Where back to the have? future, they must fight evil throughout the ages. You guys know how to fight? Yeah! Let's go kick some Zach Gallagher from Waxwork and Gremlins 1 and 2 stars with Alexander Goodenough from Witness and Die Hard. You're... you're sick. What? Take an action-packed journey through the looking glass and back in time. Waxwork 2, Lost in Time, from live home video. Ah, uh, Zach Gallagher from Waxwork. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Forget Gremlins. Gremlins 1 and 2. Um... Good evening, fans of fantastic films. Welcome to the Drive-In Asylum double feature on Bill Van Ryn and Sam Panico, blah, blah, blah. And Becca Panico is Hello. our third talking head tonight. Thank you, Becca. The B and B and S about movies is here. Yeah. Hello, everybody. And Cubby. And Vivi. And Vivi. And Vivi. Vivi's crashed like right here. You're just going to have to trust uh, me. I saw someone ask, you don't need to see... Uh, waxwork one to get this because there's no <laughs> continuity between the two movies there's a little bit a little bit it ends right where the first one begins which is one reason that becca loves this but also <laughs> it's a lot like house two where it's like it's just nuttier it's like everything they wanted to do in the first movie they just decided to do in this movie the, it has a the girl was rich in the first movie she's poor in this one like there's it, there's a it lot probably of helps if you haven't seen the first one yeah but if you've seen it you'll like it this one is uh way stranger wouldn't you say yes yeah also this is a, a caradine brothers double feature tonight it is so we're we're living it up caradine style i didn't do that on purpose no <laughs> the this movie also has a, a crawling hand in it this is a mike justice movie it has a crawling hand and it has what's his name from uh, empire records in it uh the damn hand maxwell caulfield so it is maybe we pick this for him mm -hmm. juliet mills too yeah, Jessica. Did they meet? Did they meet? Aren't they married? Yeah, they were married they long before. Making this. waxwork too. Imagine if this was the his. This was their uh, meet cute. They're we'll like, pretend we that waxwork too is where they met. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we did a silly little movie together called Waxwork Two for our friend Andrew Hickox, and it was love. Yeah, and Dan Sitch said it that Bruce Campbell also is in this, and that's my favorite part of this entire movie. So I can't wait for us to get to that part. And Martin Kemp from Spandau Ballet. How weird is that, Bill? <laughs> I remember when that happened. I mean, I was yeah. never a huge Spandau Ballet fan, but I was like, wow, that's something I didn't see coming in an acting career for. Yeah, he was on EastEnders, too. So uh, if anyone's watched that. We yeah. knew he could do all that. He did it, yeah. He's, uh, but this has some crazy people in it. it also, I have a list of some other folks that are, that are in it. Tell us the George crazy Biden. ones. George Buck Flowers in it. He plays the uh, 
alcoholic oh, abusive stepfather. Yeah. He plays that same person in every John Carpenter movie. <laughs> yeah. And also, if you notice the beer he's drinking, it's the same fake beer that they had in Repo Man. Repo Man, I mean, they use the same cans. Um, and then there is uh, Bruce Campbell. We said Michael Despars, who was in the band Detective and Power Station after Robert Palmer left. And uh, he was also MacGyver's enemy, Nicholas Hellman. We got Sophie Ward, uh, Marina Sirtis from uh, Star Trek Next Generation, John Ireland, David Carradine, Juliet Mills, we said, and even. Beck and I have gone back and forth on this. Drew Barrymore is supposedly in this for a moment as a vampire victim, but we think it might be footage from the first movie. Uh, but supposedly she was visiting the set. Why she would be visiting the set of Waxwork 2 is a mystery. Uh, but uh, there you go. But it also has like scenes from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, The Haunting, Invasion of the Body Satchers, Nosferatu, Jack the Ripper, uh, Attack of the Crab Monsters, which there's a scene on a TV in this, uh alien and there's a big scene that is very night uh, dawn of the dead in this to the point where it's like hmm seems like <laughs> they're right on the edge of parody and lawsuit during that scene speaking of dawn of the dead how about this weekend dawn of the dead is playing theatrically at the drive-in there are just so many theaters where you could go oh, see okay. dawn of the dead and i didn't go to a single one of them I saw that Sean Midas went today to see all three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, um, it's very exciting. I love Dawn of the Dead. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies. I was just talking to Bill before this. One of my non-favorite movies I watched this week is Festival of the Living Dead, which is the Tubi original uh, sequel to Night of the Living Dead. Um, it has a lot of problems. The Soska sisters who did. American Mary and uh, Rabid remake did it. Um, they didn't write the script, so I think that might be uh, part of the problem, maybe. But uh, I told Bill, like, it supposes that these girls are the grandkids of uh, Dwayne Jones, of the original, you know, good guy in Night of the Living Dead. And, and they have his gun. But, like, nobody, like, Bill and I were talking about, like, nobody knows that he died. Everybody just thought he was a zombie. <laughs> So like what, that was the whole tragedy this... of the first film was that you know everybody was dead including him and nobody knew what had happened yeah. there. Yeah, so it's like as soon as, that was like the first scene in the movie, and I'm like, well, this is made by people that don't understand the fundamental reasons behind the first, you know, the moral of the first movie. And like, oh, I'm gonna watch this, and then like literally, I was watching it, and I'm like, is this gonna be the sci-fi original uh, Return of the Living Dead five rave to the grave? Yes. It's the exact same movie without the drug. With yeah, it even has the drugs, but it they made it Molly instead of weed because you know we're in uh, we're in these times. Yeah, we're in these times, and uh, all the bands in it seem like they're bands from like like I, I hate when they make a movie and they have fake bands in it, and it's like no band sounds like this. Like, couldn't you just get a couple real bands to be in it? Or like, like what? Up and coming yeah. bands would want to be in a movie. Would want to be in a movie. Yeah, this one band, everybody looks like Slipknot, but the lead singer is a clown. Like literally like a clown and it's it's really bad there must be only 50 people at this uh rave That's or whatever big, big top yeah slipknot. slip yeah they're called big, top. big top, slipknot. <laughs> they're they're called a handkerchief knot. does anybody um, even want to be slipped on anymore oh, no no but it's it's really weird because like they're having a, a festival like it's kind of like burning man so they set up kind of that this is going to be like midsummer but then they forget that and then, like, it's supposed to be in Evan City, but it's not Evan City. Like, would it have been so expensive to shoot in Evan City? I would probably say cheaper. Um, but it looks like it's, like, at a Yogi Bear campground that they've turned into a concert stage. And, like, there are, like, there's a girl dressed like Rainbow Bright that turns into a zombie. It's, yeah, it's it's real rough. Um, let's talk about better movies, like tonight's two movies. But if you get a chance to watch it, it's a rare to be original that I didn't like. You know, though there is another one called uh, Low Lifes that's on right now. That Bill, it's an RV movie, and it's a uh, people against uh, rednecks movie, but not how you would expect. Uh, and it's, it was pretty good. I liked it. So way better. I was, than I was watching RV porn on YouTube, like where they take you into your, your their camper and show it off. And um, 
I was thinking about who had the best RV out of all those famous RV movies. We talk about camper movies all the time. Um, which one would be the one that I would pick as my favorite RV mm. out of all of them? And I think that I would have to, it's a, it's a tie uh, between the race with the devil camper, which I love. Yeah. It, it had like a little bathroom in it, which I was obsessed with. As he can, I'm like, they can put a little bathroom in a camper. But um, the other one would be from Just Before Dawn, which was just a little bit bigger than I'd be comfortable driving. Like, I I wouldn't want to drive anything as big as the RV and from um, Just Before Dawn. So um, it was really... I had some anxiety the other day thinking about them driving that van in Midnight, by the way, when it was like they were barely on the road. Yeah, because there's some roads around here, as you said before, that look just like that road. And we were on some last night because uh, the rain had a lot of roads closed, so we were driving on some somewhat sketchy conditions. And uh, I was like, This is just like midnight. I like the race with the devil one the most, Bill, because it has space for the uh motorcycle, which is nice. Do you have a favorite one, Becca? I just don't think you're safe in any of them. I mean, the hills have eyes. Like, I don't yeah. know. They can shake the RV. They can push it. They can set it on fire. No, I'm much more of a cabin girl. Like, if we're going camping or anything like that, I'll be in the cab. I'll be in the cabin with Mrs. Voorhees. So remember, you that filmed- TV- remember that TV movie with Dennis Weaver where all those guys were making animal noises while they were in the the thing? Remember? And they were like, "Come on!" He's like, "He's like, I'm gonna kill him." <laughs> it was like a hippie's a hippie Manson. Gang against Dennis Weaver and family. I think an under actually with an RV isn't horror at all. It's that movie with Jack Nicholson about Schmidt, (laughs) where his wife dies and he travels the country to go see his daughter, and he starts collecting Hummel figures. And towards the end of the movie, he forgets that he had them all on the roof, and he drives off, and they all shoot off. Hey, there before be a we go any further, we should thank our sponsors for this evening. Yes. Who are Nora you? Wallace and Jen. So thank you very much for your donation. Heavy however small, my favorite lady. However small or large you would like, um, you can send a donation to uh, you can PayPal us at groovy, groovydoom at gmail.com. I'm not going to get all fucked up on the first segment anymore. <laughs> And remember to like the video and like and subscribe on YouTube, especially we're trying to pump up our YouTube numbers. I yeah. see I see shows all the time now. Like I don't actually watch a lot of other people's shows because I'm too busy working on this one. But I have been like flicking around a little and like there's all these shows out there that look like this one. And I was like, I thought I was doing something unique. And uh, this I, one's the best. But you I, are unique. Well, I'm going to have to step up my game. That's what I felt. I was like, I really have to take this to the next level somehow. So stay Do tuned. Do they have beards? Mm-hmm. Everyone has a beard. <laughs> We're going to have to shave. No. I like We're going to have to. I like it this way. You gonna... need suspenders, too. Oh, That's what we're missing. We're going to be in virtual reality, so you can put on goggles, and you can see us in different parts. It's like we're in the room with you. Yeah. Yeah, and we're like, the cubby's right behind you. Sneaky. Did you like your Mrs. Elrod avatar, Becca? I did. I think I'm going to be dressed like her for the second segment. Woohoo! <laughs> I think you... I'm doing a costume change. Mm. Your robe is white, though, not pink. Yeah, I know. I'll have to get a pink one, though. Do I have a few you? robes. Yeah. None of them are pink. There are several several robes in the house, though. It's, <laughs> there are several. I will not be doing a change. I'll be uh, Mr. Elrod out in the kitchen. She'll say, you want mustard with that? Or you could just fall asleep like normal and be Mr. Elrod. I will be Mr. Elrod. Mm -hmm. Right at the beginning of a great movie, too, falling asleep Mm -hmm. in your chair. Yeah. How dare you, Harold. It's happened. Uh, I'm excited for Waxwork 2 and Blackout, though. I think these are two movies that more people should be talking about and um, fired up about them. And then I'm also excited, Bill, because we're two weeks away from the drive-in. As of now, two weeks from today, we'll be at the drive-in again. It's going to be wonderful. Gonna have a good time. A birthday show because Bill's birthday is actually before mine. Yeah, Bill's birthday was this week. Happy yes. birthday. So 
one celebrated birthday, and then mine is May 1st. So they said I could pick the movies. So this is, these were my choices. We can have our birthday at the same time. It's Vivi's birthday, too. Oh. Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, she may have gotten a gift, too. Yeah. We, we already bought We it. were going to bring your gift to the drive, but we found an amazing gift Ooh. for Vivi. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. She wait. loved the gift you gave her for Christmas. Oh, it was yeah. like this goodie bag stuff of dog stuff. Like there was a there was a Christmas doggy bed, and it had um, a couple of toys in it. One of them became her favorite toy immediately. It was like this stuffed Santa Claus that had a squeaker in it. She loves it that like thing. Sam. Yeah. <laughs> she likes to bite it by the beard. Aw. Hubby said he used some of his money. He threw it on that gift. Ah, uh, thank you, Covey. Okay. Vivi says thank you. No, I got it. We have to tell you a bad story about Covey. Covey did the grossest thing we've ever seen. This you don't week. have to tell anyone oh, that. I'm telling because you know the basement's Ew. still getting the basement's still getting fixed, so no one can go into it yet. So we have one of the litter boxes upstairs, and while we were getting ready to go to bed, someone jumped in the litter box and emerged with a cigar in his mouth. Um, Ew. But it wasn't a cigar. You didn't have to tell it. <laughs> yeah. And, but he's a good boy, but don't kiss him. If you know, if you meet him, he also will bite you. Yeah. Just don't go near him because he'll bite you. <laughs> Look, but yeah. don't touch. Yeah. He said some things that happen in this house are private. This isn't for the Cubby. show. This is not for the show. You think this is pink flamingos, Cubby? Come on. Yeah. This is, I swear I'm not a weirdo. <laughs> he just likes the taste. He's a good boy. Just when you think he can't find something else weird to do. Also, he got a new steps this week because he had other steps that he was having difficulty with. Last week, he dove off the couch during the right after when we had finished the first segment. We thought he was dead. Um, he went, oh, when he hit the ground. Uh -huh. He fell on his back. He fell on his he back. He stunned himself. He stunned himself, yeah. It was like the wind got knocked out of him. So he was limping around for a day. Yeah. And so right now we're probably $150 in steps. Yeah. He had soft ones first, but those were too, it was like the three little bears or whatever, Goldilocks. The first ones were too soft. The second ones were too hard. And now he has a ramp. And it's just right. And so I have three handicap accessible dogs. Except he <laughs> likes to stand on the ramp and just stare into and space. He likes the feeling of being in between the state floor and the couch. So he just stands there and goes. Vince has a, she doesn't have steps. She just has an old ottoman that I had that has like old DVD burns stuffed in it. But I, I grabbed like the first thing I could find for her when we first got her. Cause like she thought she was hot shit. Our bed is pretty high up off the floor and she wants to get up there. And she just thought, you know, no problem. And she jumped up there maybe for like a couple of months. And then after falling off a couple of times, I was like, oh. you know what? She can't do that as well as she thinks she can. Well, his yeah. bones are little sticks. Like, yeah. If I fell off the couch, I might break myself. And then yesterday, we actually had a very close call. Sam took him out in the yard for a walk. And a hawk <laughs> yeah. came real close to circling <gasps> little cubs. Oh, and when no. said, it was go. just circling right above him. And I said, Oh, get that hawk. And Becca said, You go out and get him you right go now. Get him. <laughs> so he was protected from the hawk. I just watched a video online tonight of a dog that was defended by a cat against coyotes. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Aren't... He was like this little teacup dog taking a poop in the backyard. And <laughs> all of a sudden, these coyotes, it all got captured on their home camera. And these coyotes come out of nowhere, and then suddenly, like this big black cat runs at them and attacks, and the co the coyotes run off afraid. They sell these. Um, I've seen them. I haven't bought one for Cubby, but they look like Hellraiser jackets. They yeah, our neighbor has one. Yeah, all over them. So in case a large bird comes, can't take Cubby. <laughs> Cubby will be like, "You called, I came." And then he'll just show maybe Cubby in that outfit will meet Doug Bradley at the drive in. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Cub, Cub head and pinhead. Mm -hmm. Back up. <laughs> yeah. Why wax work too? It was a frequent rental. I've said many times that I rented like the same 10 movies every weekend. This was one of them. Um, I just love all the different little stories and. It's just a great movie. So many, like I said, there's so many like little cameos and 
just if you're watching it for the first time, like, you won't be expecting, like, the different things. It's almost, it's got, like, a little bit of, like, magic to it and, like, fantasy, too. So I think for being younger, when I first saw it, it was, like, not just your typical horror movie. Like, there was magic and witchcraft and all kinds of stuff in it. And I just loved it. Not to mention, there's a really good rap song at the end of the credits. <laughs> so watch out for that. <laughs> this is actually a terrible rap song, but it's... Okay. Whose bars are they? I'm sorry? <laughs> Who does the song? Oh, I don't even know. It's so, some no-name rap group. Like, it's, like I said, you aren't expecting like certain scenes and you know stuff keeps happening. And you aren't expecting those end credits either. <laughs> Waxwork rap. Mm-hmm. Not everyone can be Vanilla Ice or MC and Hammer. And this is, it's, I would consider it a horror comedy. There's a lot of funny parts in it, too. So. The director did uh, Sundown. There's, like, that, like, comical music. Like yeah. Like, this one, or the first one was, like, spooky and more horror. You know, there's a hand, like, thing in this. And when it moves, it's got that, like, what kind of music would you call that? Like that goofy, like the Halloween Five goofy music, <laughs> that kind of music, like jokey. It's very the same evil. Director Dead did, uh, the same director did Hellraiser Three too, which uh, is not horrible. Hell on Earth and uh, uh, Sundown, the Vampire in Retreat, and uh, Warlock Armageddon. So he ended up doing and the Prince Valiant movie too. So he did a ton of and stuff. And the first wax work. The first wax work, yeah. So. Uh, he also, he was dating, right? The uh, the girl he Deborah, dated, um, Deborah Foreman. Yeah, Deborah Foreman, who plays Sarah in the first movie, in first Waxwork, and they broke up, so that's why she is not Sarah in the second movie. Yeah, and Deborah Mon- Foreman, we know from Valley Girl. Yeah, one of my favorite movies. Monica Shar is the uh, the actress who took over, and she's six one. Mm-hmm. She's probably a good foot taller than. Uh, than Zach Gilligan, so uh, I'm sure they had to shoot around that. Uh, which astrologer did you see, Nora? There's two different ones. There's, did you see uh, the Moody Blues one? Yeah, there's Suicide Cult, aka Astrologer, <clears throat> and then there's they're both crazy, they're both insane movies. But the other astrologer, oh boy, yeah, something else. Hmm, Chris said father son directors tonight. Interesting. I think I saw Waxwork theatrically. Really? I think so. Because that was right around the time when I could go to an R-rated movie. And I didn't, you know, I really was old enough to go see an R movie. I, I, we got into them all the time because the, the box office people were all kids our age. So they'd let us in to see anything. But I saw a lot of movies theatrically around that time just because I could, finally. Oh, wow. That to- that's totally wild. I, that was a complete action. I just saw what Chris said. The uh, director of Blackout is Anthony Hickox's dad. How weird is that? <laughs> There's our theme. Set up, set up out in the yeah in the cosmos. And, it, and he like, also, like all of these. <laughs> he also directed Theater of Blood. Uh, wow, that's totally crazy that they are uh, that that happened. And the Carradines are in both. There's a lot of connections between these. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's pretty rad. Yeah, this was an all-the-time rent. Um, actually, I love this movie. I like the first one. If I had to live with one for the rest of my life, I would pick the first one over this one. But um, like I said, it's just so different and funny and goofy and some scary. The Bruce Campbell part, like when we get to that part, I think that's actually very scary <laughs> in the movie, watching it as a kid. Um, yeah. That's just good. I'm excited for people to see it, and I hope everyone will like it. It's definitely not boring. It's very exciting. Yeah. What were your other regular rentals besides Halloween too? What well, were that you? one we owned. You owned I didn't that. have to rent that. Oh, no. okay. I had like six copies of that. Just there you case. go. The good times. Did you have yeah. a good times VHS? Yeah. Well, like I said, we had um, the VHS, but then we had also taped it off of television or HBO or whatever. And my dad had cut out the commercials and there was some stuff missing that like you, you know, when I watch the DVDs now, like certain parts that didn't have in there from TV. 
TV. So I was like very excited when I figured that out. I didn't realize that there were missing parts to some of my favorite movies. But you rented Taurus Trap a lot. Taurus Trap. Um, oh geez, People Under the Stairs was a big one. Bad channel. Bad channels. <laughs> All the full moon. That's what I told when we met uh, Charles Band. I said, you were my childhood. Like, you don't understand. I said, if they could check the numbers from Livonia, Michigan, all your movies were at my house. All the time. So, and it was a, a big bonding experience with my brother because, like, we loved all the movies together. My brother's favorite is Killer Clown, so he may make an appearance at the drive-in. Ooh. Yeah. What other chance is he going to have to see killer clowns at a drive-in? He's got to be there. He's yeah. got to. I know. Yeah. Yep. And it's early, too, so it's like he can get there. And- yeah. They, I told them. They're not late-night people, so I told them they don't have to stay all night. Just leave so after killer night. clowns. <laughs> I know. No. He just has to bring Rick, though. Bring Rick and Lucy, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. that would be pretty awesome. Cubby, Squint, and Ricky. Yeah. I'm excited. so excited to see killer clowns at the drive-in. That's going to be fun. Me too. I'm yeah. I'm really I, I we did it on the show not too long ago with the stolen stitches who are also gonna be at the drive in. Yeah. Danger Dave, Hot Toddy, and their super awesome little clown baby Oscar will be there. <laughs> and uh but yeah, that the, they really are are into that movie and they picked that. And after we watched it on the show, I, I was reminded of how awesome Killer Clowns is. I kind of forgot about it for a long oh, time. It's so good. Yeah. <clears throat> That's another one like we can do the dialogue from. <laughs> Your you brother was afraid of them when he was little. Oh, we were terrified of yeah. them. Yeah. Critters is another one for you Critters. guys too, right? Critters, yeah. Anything from the 80s. Oh yeah. my god, just completely rent it all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm lucky that, you know, my dad loved horror movies and my mom loved sci-fi, so they, you know, that was back when you recorded stuff off HBO and TV, so those were all my first <laughs> copies of movies that were actually kept in our house, and you know, Her I was dad, lucky they, my dad also, you know, the comedies that I enjoy to this day are the ones that my dad showed me, like all the Richard Pryor stuff and like Eddie Murphy, like that's all my favorite stuff, so I was lucky that I think that my parents had really good taste in movies to get us started, so. Your dad also had rules though, where he'd be like, he liked Halloween until the end, and he's like, you don't get shot six times. Yeah, he had And complaints. get back up, and he would like want to, he would, every time he me, like, want to talk about it with me, and I'm like, yeah, I know, that's the point. And he's like, no. He liked, he really liked possession movies though, like any, oh, yeah. any movies with like devil worship stuff, he really liked those. Did you tell him that people's heads don't really turn around backwards? <laughs> he went through a phase when Sam first got him shutter. Yeah. Oh. He's like, this one's... They I, were, you know, on the movie, it was, like, rated, like, this one's rated three skulls. This one's four skulls. Sam would tell him about a movie, and then he'd say, you know, Sam, it's only got two skulls. It can't be that good. <laughs> yeah, I only watch five skull movies. <laughs> and That's... this went on for, like, a whole year. He goes, it's only got three skulls. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Those are standards. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you would be, yeah, that's what I got. Five skulls, man. That's tough. Yeah. Like what I I realize though that there are genre fans who just they they stay at the top like that like yeah. those are like those diehard alien fans and everything they're like oh well, it's not good you know like it's it's not good like the first two were uh, so they can't get into anything else it's got to be great or else they're not passionate about it yeah I as we as we know with me like that's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> the worse, the better, usually, except for the Festival of the Living Dead that I talked about. Like when a movie's really bad and has no redeeming values, that's when I'm like, oh, no. But it didn't like, entertain you. It's bad. Because no, it, it didn't. didn't. Yeah. But a lot of the really bad ones do entertain me, which is good. So looking forward to seeing everybody at the drive in, though. That's pretty cool. I see different people saying Paul says he's going to be there on Saturday. You know, a few other folks will be there. So it's going to be a blast. I hope it doesn't rain and oh. we don't get the I hope the all the rain the rain is all out of our system after this week. I hope. Because if it rains a little bit, the driving's a muddy mess. Yeah. <laughs> if it rains like it's been raining, it's going to be underwater. We'll I got Mark Dockham to agree to bring his canopy this time. So we will have something to sit oh. underneath if, if it rains. 
That's good. And it's so funny, you know, how many times have we gone to it and we're never fully prepared? I know. Ever. <laughs> it's I, always the first time. I like, we'll be out in a store and I'm like, oh, that'd be good for the drive in. Oh, we'll get it next time we go. And then we go to the drive and we're like, we should have bought that, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> yeah. We should have brought was, that boat. There was a time when I would have been disappointed if it rained at the drive-in, but you know what? I've been to so many drive-ins where it where it rained. Now, it's no big deal. I yeah. just kind of like look forward to just being there. You know, if it's like a downpour, that's one thing. But it, it's we've never had like torrential rain at the drive-in. What's the name of the plastic thing that they have the commercials for? Rain guard. Oh, gutter guard. Or whatever it is. How come they don't sell those there? They would make a killing. I don't know, Becca. That maybe you can have maybe some. That's ready. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's my new craft. You should make make like twenty of them and have them at the mm-hmm. drive-in. Official. Walk around with a backpack full of rain guard. Official drive-in <laughs> asylum rain guard. Twenty of them. That's that's an exclusive product. Only twenty people yeah. are going to get to use it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what we'll do. That's our, our be our product. You should charge more. If there's only going to be twenty, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they'll be numbered. Yeah, the they'll edition. be auctioned. <laughs> hey, speaking of product, somebody has a new issue to sell. <gasps> somebody does. Hey, thank you yeah. for reminding me. I totally forgot. Yeah. Yes, the new Drive in Asylum is on sale. Uh, issue number twenty six. It is an April twenty twenty four release, and I think I've been promising it since the fall. So, you know, get over it. <laughs> Everybody who was so anxious about this issue should be very happy. And I am very like happy. Rangard, it's limited. It's very it's limited. limited. <laughs> I am very happy about this issue. It turned out fabulous. This is one of my favorite ones, I think, oh, good. That, that we've done. And that, I say that about every one of them. They're, they're like my children once they're ready they're to go. Kid. Yeah. But there oh. we go. Issue issue number 26 is now available in uh, the Groovy Doom Etsy shop. Hey, what more do you want for five bucks? This fabulous issue contains interviews with Zooey Hall, uh, who is uh, the star of Fortune in Men's Eyes and one of my favorite movies, I Dismember Mama. Uh, Even though we don't like that title, the original title was better, Poor Albert and Little Annie. I think, but I dismember Mama has that marquee value, you must admit. Um, director Gary Sherman, fabulous. Um, I, for, I forget what first name I'm supposed to use for this author. Rob Hemsley <laughs> from the UK interviewed him at a convention, and Gary was super nice. He talked to, to him for a long time and um, got some good stuff. So uh, Gary Sherman talked to us. Uh, wow. Uh, two exclusive interviews with Zoe Hall and Gary Sherman. Author Paul Talbot, uh, the author of Bronson's Loose, the making of the Death Wish movies. Two oh. great books. Ooh, I love those, both of the, the books he did. Yeah. Since they, by the way, happy birthday, Paul Talbot. Today's his birthday. Oh, awesome. Lots of April birthdays around, around-ish this time. Um. Let's see. Also, some terrific features, including yours, Sam, a review of Miss Leslie's Dolls. I love that movie. It was a revelation. So uh, it it will probably be on the show at some point, too. (laughs) Yeah, we should do that ASAP. Um, AC Nicholas wrote a tribute to Night Flight. And uh, we got reviews of uh, The Mask by Matt Hankey. Sorry, Matt, I omitted this piece from the last issue, which is really even worse because I've started doing them maybe twice a year now. So I'm um, sorry, Matt, that you had to wait so long for this piece to get in print. It's finally there. Put on the mask. And Tammy and the T-Rex, that was Joseph Perry, wrote about that. And yours truly, I wrote about the Slayer. Oh, fabulous man. supernatural slasher from 1982 and the single girls from 1970 also from 72 well 72 sorry the slayers from 82 uh single girls is quickly becoming one of my favorite exploitation films not only because claudia jennings is in it but uh, it's just really so 
cheap rinky dink and it's got <laughs> proto slasher written all over it seek it out the single girls and go buy the issue because it's only five bucks so you know well, that's two thrills i watched a proto slasher today i'd never seen before bill have a nice weekend have you ever seen that from 1975 no oh man it's kind of like 75 yeah it's like very Agatha Christie-ish. This kid comes home from Vietnam and invites his whole family to their vacation home to talk to them about his experiences. And then one by one, they start getting killed off. It kind of has like very much like a rich folks in bad situation frogs vibe without any of the eco horror. But it it's also super slow and nobody likes it. And I loved it because it's just like they're like every review is like nothing happens in this movie and the acting's really bad. And I'm like, yeah, it's written by the same guy that wrote Mahogany and Insert and directed Inserts, which is crazy. Um, but it's a it's a it's a curiosity to be sure. So I watched that today and I kind of dug it. I also watched and I shouldn't have, Bill. I finally watched Mother of Tears today. And oh boy. I don't I haven't, <laughs> yet, I haven't yet come to grips with it. Uh but boy, it's something, it's a movie. So uh, I'm going to be thinking through that part right about it. There, there's love, a big part of me that's like, don't be mean to Dario, but oh boy. I love that it's a dress. The, the, yeah. the cursed object is a dress. And this yeah. little mini cutoff dress at that. And at the end where she gets the stick and rips it off of her and burns, she's like, no, you fucking bitch. Yeah. <laughs> she turns around and she's like, no, you bitch. It's uh, Italy. You need to associate it with fashion. Yeah. I'd be like, so, you, you know what, and bitch, you you were just about to have a bunch of witches eat me alive. What yeah. I'm supposed to we've like, been eating her say. for a long time. <laughs> My family kills like, witches, the, bitch. There's also like it really doesn't have anything to do with the. Uh, it does and it doesn't, but they talk about the dance school for like like a cursory 15 seconds, and I'm like, oh. and I'm like, I kind of like Black Cat. Uh, the cozy one more as this as the third movie than this, but I'm gonna go back and watch it again so that I'm not completely negative and hopefully I'll find something to like in it. That's that's what I'm trying. I did think Monday. I don't know if anyone else did. As I was looking at the eclipse, I was like, oh wait, I saw dark glasses, and that girl looked at the eclipse, and water snakes attacked her. So I did oh. not look directly at the eclipse. Um, so Argento has taught me things. He's still teaching. Me. Suddenly there were snakes. Water snakes just, just randomly show up, but I laughed out loud. I was like, this is great. Um, yeah, did you watch the eclipse, Bill, or did you just say yeah? No, it didn't look like anything, and it was cloudy, so I didn't even go outside. It didn't even get that dark here, really. Like, I yeah. was expecting... I took a nap. We had our own eclipse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was my, the way my... to do it. It got dark. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> we went to... My mom wanted to go see it, so we took my mom up north to see it. And um, him and Noah, my brother and I did, yeah. And I had to stay home for the insurance agent. Yeah. <laughs> and my 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 mom was like, "You should Facetime Becca." And I always said, "She's not awake." And my brother's like, "She's sleeping through the event of the millennium." I'm like, "I don't think this is the event of the millennium. I think it's an eclipse." But you know, it was crazy because we were listening to it on the radio, and there were like all these audiences cheering and like going crazy for it, and like orchestras playing with it and stuff in other cities. And I was like, we were just like in a parking lot. Um, like if there's angels behind it or aliens come down after it, give me a call. I'll come outside. But yeah. other than that, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like if you were somewhere where, where you could see it really well, then I would have, I wouldn't have missed something like that. But here yeah. in Pittsburgh, it really was not that big of a deal. There were people that were that were like downtown on top of buildings watching it. They had those eclipse viewers and everything. Yeah. Like, Did they see Independence Day? That's where they dropped yeah. the, the bomb is on top of the building. Night yeah. of the Comet. Like I know yeah. better than to go outside during this. That's things. what I'm saying. Like, unless something like that happens. Becca was sleeping. <laughs> Becca and Cubby were sleeping in an aluminum shed, so they would have been fine. Yeah. Uh when when the eclipse went. I I listened to the, the eclipse was going to get I mean, crazy. Cubby and I did. just wanted, you know, it to be a wasteland and the malls to be open just for us to go and shop. Yeah. It's like Night of the Comet. 
I mean, we'll I, deal with a few zombies, whatever. We're good. I believe Miracle Patty. I stayed inside when he darkened the earth, which is what she oh, used to say. Yeah. <laughs> Go inside for three days when he darkens the earth. That was her like little answering machine message she spouted to every single person she met. Oh. So I was prepared. Thank you, Pat. Uh, I He kept saying, what if it's the apocalypse? I said, it's not the apocalypse. I said, I'll talk to you when I get <laughs> He's always, I'll give him credit. He's always very romantic and emotional and stuff like this. Like, what if, what if? I'm like, it's fine. I said, I got to take a nap. I'm the girl in this relationship. I, I'm like, oh, I love you. Like, eh. And we're still all here today. So. We're still here. Right, ready to watch Wax. My Wax. prediction was correct. That we'd still be here? Yeah. I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad everybody else is here tonight. And I think it's time for a cocktail, don't you? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Waxwork. Welcome to the Waxwork. Welcome to the Waxwork. This is the Solomon's Locket for Waxwork 2. Now, here's what's in it. An ounce of vodka, half ounce peach schnapps, half ounce blue curacao, Half ounce of lemon and lime juice, half ounce simple syrup, two ounces of lemon and lime syrup, you, syrup, soda. Soda. You can use whatever kind you'd like. Two ounces of cranberry juice. We're going to try an experiment at the end of it. They all been put together by my lovable wife. We're about to make a drink. This will send you back in time with Zach Gilligan. So there's all your alcohol. There's all your juices and your simple syrup, except for the final ingredient and this is the magical elixir of seven up remember that there is carbonation in that so that when we open it we're we're okay because it's red i can hear it already yeah so that's what we do why is that all wet i don't know it seems crazy anyway let's try the drink um. through the magic of colors. You made a gray drink. <laughs> I mean, it's great. It's like it's kind of purple, I'd say, more than gray. Hmm. We're gonna try this. Beck got these for me for Christmas. This is the Blue Lagoon. It does not star Brooke Shields. Uh, man, I can't hear to open things anymore. Well, I wonder why my hands are wet. They're always wet. This is a little cocktail shimmer. We're gonna shimmer up the drink. Hmm. There we go. Sparkly. The sparkly drink. It just looks like oh, I see it. You see it? Yeah. I'll probably see it tomorrow morning when I go to the bathroom. I love shimmery poops. Shimmery poops. Or anyway, shimmery peas. Solomon's Locket. Let's try it out. Mmm, Pazuzu. Let's enjoy waxwork, too. I wasn't prepared for that abrupt return. Pazuzu. Pazuzu to everybody. Pazuzu. Mm. Now I'm going to make a Night of the Comet 2 poster with Becca and Cubby on it for the wall. That'll be that'll be my next thing I make. But, like, if that were to happen, Cubby and I want to wake up in a different town. Like, we don't want a Pittsburgh ball. We yeah. want, like, Boca Raton or Rodeo Drive. <laughs> yeah. That we just up on, you know, in Rodeo Drive and we just have the stores to ourselves. Cubby likes luxury designer goods, so, I mean. Yeah, that powder was uh champagne shimmer it's called becca got me a whole bunch of colors for uh christmas and i just haven't used them yet but I, we thought they'd look cool in cocktails so they did they actually made it shimmer it's kind of cool have you seen it again yet what the shimmer <laughs> so oh no I no it hasn't made its way it through hasn't made its way. <laughs> though a couple years ago becca and amy on new year's Got this you may have been there. I don't even remember. That's how bad it was. They got, what was it, hypnotic or something? <laughs> no, it was some, um, Amy and I went to the liquor store and some man talked us into buying this. It was just one of those flavored boozes, like a hypnotic or whatever. It was that purple and it was just filled with glitter. Like just Ew. sweet grape purple liquor. And it was filled they both got with sick. glitter. They both got sick. And the toilet was literally shine. It was gl so glittery. <laughs> Ew. The glitter well, did not dissolve in your body. I'll just tell you that. When it well, came, 
Still how there. could that be edible? How how could that be fit for it human probably consumption? Isn't. It probably wasn't. Because <laughs> I get here, and I went in to like hold her hair, and it was just all glitter coming yeah, this out. This guy came right up to us, and he's like, "This is unspecial. You girls got to try this. This is all the rage." Blah blah blah. Well, we finished that bottle that night. And... No. Yuck. <laughs> yeah. What a horrible that experience. In, that's why Becca sticks to beer on New Year's now. Yeah, I had to have been there because I've been at, well, I mean, if it was in the last three years, I think, or four years. Oh, it was at the old house. It was a while ago. Yeah, but, but you were, yeah. I think, though. Yeah, there. I think you were. Yeah. That was a wild one, though. That was probably the last of the wild ones. Yeah. Though, the, the uh, Labor Day parties used to get wilder. Those were the crazy parties. Were you at the one, Bill, where, Ch- where Chad Rapp was? chasing uh, my friend Joe and and ran back into the house and fell into my bathtub and, and busted just, the tile. He busted all the tile out of my tub. You know, I think I missed that one, but I heard about it at the oh next one. It was crazy because he was bleeding so bad. But he was so drunk he didn't realize he, he was, was so, bleeding. And then my mom got there and he had made like, uh, he's a chef, is, is one of my friends, if people don't know. And he played it all this stuff for my mom. And he came out and he was like doing like the Iron Chef thing where he was telling her where all the ingredients were. And there's just and blood. blood. There's just blood <laughs> all over him. And he was telling her about how he grew the arugula himself. And he was telling her all about it. And she's like, Chad, you should probably go to the hospital. And he's like, I think I will. And then, uh, <laughs> then she ate these tomatoes that he made. Yeah. That's brutal. Absolutely. I thought he brutal. got hit by a car. The noise was so loud. He's like they were. Ch- he was chasing one of my friends, and he ran into a parked car, and then he fell coming back down the hill, and then he chased him into the bathroom, and then they both fell into the tub, and just there were just tile everywhere, and I was like, oh god. But hey, we got a new bath, a new shower out of it, so I guess that was good. So here's a character Who's- from Waxwork too. Lost. Oh yeah. yeah. A-, a legit crazy person too. Scare of us. <laughs> Very hairy chest. I, I'm not sure if it's an appliance or not. Um, he uh, always was a bad guy, except in Witness. Yeah, in Witness, which is another Becca favorite. He actually um came over because he, he was he was in the ballet. Yeah, he was really good friends with Mikhail Baryshnikov, and uh, then they, later in their lives, that's your that's your yeah. uh. They later in their lives they became rivals uh, and fought over something because he didn't like how he was directed by Brezhnikov later in his life. But he had a crazy Alexander Gudnov had a wild uh, existence. But yeah, he's really good in Witness. He died in ninety five. He was only forty five when he died, which is pretty sad. That was. Uh... Becca has some facts here. She's looking up. He's going to terrify us tonight in Waxwork 2. Is he the Klaus Kinski of this movie? Yeah, yeah, he is the Klaus Kinski of this movie. I like that Michael Disbars is in this, whose wife Pamela wrote one of my favorite books, I'm With the Band. He was also on the WKRP in Cincinnati syndicated one, uh, beyond being in the band detective. Yeah, it says for his death, he drank alcohol to excess, and this became a problem as he got older. On May 18th, 1995, his friends became uh, concerned. Um, people didn't hear from him a few days, and he had died, and it was due to hepatitis and secondary uh, chronic alcoholism. Yeah. Sad ending for one of my favorite bad guys. Yeah, he and I saw someone ask, he is, is in Die Hard. And uh, this movie is on Tubi tonight, which you can find it. And you'll get the new Tubi logo that you can be like, oh, I don't like that logo, but it's okay. I'm coming to grips with the new Tubi logo. Oh, yeah. I just noticed that tonight. How weird. Yeah. I like how when it starts out, it goes, Tubi, Tubi. It's so, you know, you know it's not Tubby. They're like, I'm sick of people calling it Tubby. Fucking Tubi. Sam doesn't have any tattoos, but I bet you would think it would be like a Tubi logo. Probably. You know what else I heard? Zach Galligan is sick of being called Zach Gilligan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's sick of being called Zach Gilligan of Arcus. It's so funny because this movie reminds me of 
wax work too, how there's so much different stuff in it. From the comedy sketch Key and Peel, they talk about gremlins too. Yeah. When there there was a lady who was like this magic director lady and she came in the room during the board meeting and said, Everybody at this table has to come up with their own gremlin and it's gonna be in the movie. <laughs> You want an electricity gremlin? You got it. It's <laughs> you in got the movie. It. It's you in... want a fruit gremlin? It's in the movie. <laughs> you want Hulk Hogan to be in the movie? You're crazy. And it's but in it's the... in the movie. It's in the movie. But that's kind of what this movie is like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you like aliens? It's in the, it's movie. In the movie. It's in the movie. You, you want... like all black and white hauntings? It's in the movie. How about 20 minutes of Dawn of the Dead? monster? It's <laughs> yeah. in the movie. A rap ending? It's in the movie. Like, you... That's what that makes you me You also think like of. wax movies. Do you like I movie, do. I love are... any. This it's funny because this movie has absolutely nothing to do with wax. <laughs> <laughs> it's a time travel movie. Yeah. that started with wax. And the the part that I never understood, like they threw this in there again for the mystery and magic part. In the beginning, you'll see um, how they get into this predicament. They talk about Alice through the looking glass. Yeah. It has nothing to do with anything. Throw that in there. Well, it's like an Italian movie that starts with a quote from a book that's really not a that real has book. Nothing to do that has with nothing anything. to do with like, the prophecy of the black prophecy. P R O F E C Y of the black spider. Yeah. And then what's the only, I mean, other tie in is they continue the Sir Alfred story, which he was one of um, the heroes in the first movie. And who, what's, who plays him? Patrick. Patrick McNee. Patrick McNee. From the Avengers, yeah. So he is their connection on how they get into this predicament. Yeah. Oh, are we going to wax nostalgic about paying 99 cents to rent a video? Uh, yes. Yes. Or a dollar, even a dollar 97. Wow. Told you. Five dollars for five days. <laughs> five movies for five dollars for five days. That was my shtick. Yeah, this was... Uh, I don't know. Did we know what we had then? No, I don't no, think no. we did. I, it's funny because there's so many times we would go to Blockbuster or something like, they didn't have anything. Or like our store, like if stuff was out, like, oh, they don't have anything in the store. It's all out. My brother reminded me that one of our friends worked at another video store in town. And my brother said when the store closed, they would all sit there and make their own sound effects for the movie and like uh, do their own dubbing for them. Well, as kids, I thought we were hot shit because, you know, we lived in Michigan. So I had a blockbuster, I had value video, like memberships to all those, and then we would come to Pittsburgh for the summers. And I had membership at Giant Eagle, Eagle Video. Eagle video. I'm like, I got memberships in different states. Wow. They know your name yeah. everywhere, Becca. They do. They're like, she's doing it in two states now. She's taking so, all the Halloween. Yeah, hold on to your Halloween too. <laughs> Don't let yeah. anyone take They that see out. me come up and they put them behind the counter. They're like, yeah. other people want to watch these. Yeah, what? Uh, and this, I would do the same thing at the library with CDs when you could rent CDs back in the day. Yeah, hey, I'd rent all the same music CDs too. Look who's in the chat, Bill Lustig. I will say that Becca read in Maniac Cop two a thousand times too, not just because yeah. Bill Lustig's in the in the chat, but that's another Becca million times. Because Leo Rossi's in Leo Rossi's in it, yeah. Bud. Bud is in it, yeah. So that's another <laughs> Becca. Because when it when Maniac Cop played the drive-in, it was like she was like word for word in the car. Uh, last year, like saying all the lines, she knows that movie back and forth. I went to the dry, the Mahoning Drive-in to see all three Maniac Cop pictures, and oh. Bill Lustig sent us a nice little video introduction. He was supposed to be there in person, but this was like during the pandemic, and yeah. there were like quarantine issues, so he couldn't be there. But it was really nice to see that. Anyway, it's mm-hmm. nice to see you tonight, Bill Lustig. Yeah, that's awesome. And, uh, I can do Maniac Dog if you're interested. <laughs> Maniac Dog 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> Sign me up. He would do it. Mm-hmm. This was the oh. kind of stuff that made me excited, though. I would look in the newspaper and see something like this, and it would make me want to go immediately to my video store, which I already oh. knew about all the horror shit anyway, because, you know, the super cool lesbians that ran it. like They were into all the horror. And... Uh, Waxwork was, I don't know, I, I think I saw it theatrically. Maybe not, though. Like, thinking back on it, I'm like, what, was that ever, like, a big theatrical release? I never. You know, I, I'm not even I sure. I would have been too young to know, like, if, you know, we got it as a rental. Like, if it was yeah, a movie, I, I probably did, too. Know, but 
Yeah. I'm getting old. I it's just, hard for me to remember a, this stuff. As a kid, like I had this obsession with David Warner, so <laughs> it was David Warner. <laughs> oh my god, I loved him in The Island. I in the Omen, like I want that wardrobe. Like if Sam dressed like that, like with the little scarves <laughs> and the little. Oh my my the Island. Get, my head would. Get yeah. The island is awesome. That was something I used. I I I just didn't think I would be interested in that because it didn't have a monster in it, from what I can yeah. tell. But it was one of those HBO movies, and I watched it, and I was obsessed with it. Like every time it came on, I had to watch The Island. It's so good. I love him. He in, just had the best voice. I love him in Tron. When I was a kid, yeah. I would try to do his voice. I'm like, "You're coming into the video game grid now." Program. <laughs> I probably just wanted to watch it because it has full frontal penis in it, but oh, the island, yeah, yeah it, it does. I'm like, I don't remember Dick and Tron. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was still thinking about the. I wasn't finished. Oh, okay. With the island, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's in a ton of great movies. I always love when he shows up and stuff. Except for Titanic, I thought that was. That's not bullshit. When he plays the mean, his henchman. Oh, yeah. He needed money at that time, I'm guessing. <laughs> he was on a murder she wrote we watched last week, remember? He's on like four murder she wrote. Yeah, I know. We've been watching uh, the Pluto murder she wrote channel. And if you love exploitation movies, good chance someone will love. Oh, your people is good to be in it. It's like John Saxon showed up last week and I ran outside screaming. I was so excited. Was like, yeah, the day after I met D. Wallace. I got two murder she wrote with D. Wallace in it. They must have known. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, I was like, I know her. <laughs> D. Wallace is amazing. I love her. I she's when you just meet her, she's like a mom. Like she's just so friendly and. My favorite murder she wrote is the one. But I like that she's cool enough to like want to do stuff with Rob Zombie and like not. Yeah, much. like she likes like, doing those. She's yeah, she's not she somebody that resents like. having to do that for work. You know, she she, mm -hmm. she seems like she really likes it. Mm -hmm. I always think of that murder show we watched where the they thought the dog killed somebody. Yeah, Teddy the dog, and she's like, "Whoosh, Teddy!" <laughs> it was a, a dog they were training. Yeah, a trained dog. And something they, with horses. And... They thought the dog killed a guy, and they had to exonerate the dog. Yeah. He was in dog jail for the whole episode. Yeah, the they had to get the dog out of jail. Mm -hmm. Who lets Jessica come to their house, Bill? That's what I wonder. It's a bad idea. It's like inviting it's Jennifer and uh, Jonathan Hart over. You know, somebody's going to die. I saw four different high school reunions that Jennifer Hart went to, all in different towns. Do you know what I mean? Like, she would always go to, and inevitably, someone would die. Someone would try to pick her up because they were in love with her and they never told her, and they would try to kill Jonathan. Max would get knocked out, of course. That's yeah. Max get, for being their bodyguard. Max gets knocked out an awful lot. Many head injuries for Max. Max had he he had uh, uh, concussion protocols. <laughs> like Max, you got to take the next two weeks off. You've had... it's not just her; it's her like family members too. Like the one where she went on a cruise with her niece. Oh my and there God, are people that stalking her niece, her nephew, Grady. Like I hate Grady, oh. the worst. The Grady is the worst. Every time Great Grady always has a different girl, things always get screwed up. Yeah, it's bad. We're, we did used to do a Murder, She Wrote podcast too together. <laughs> but it was like too much information. Yeah, it was too much. Oh, like, you guys don't do that anymore. That's right. No. Yeah, we did the OJ one too, and then Becca was doing a true crime one, and she was what number? What country were you really big in? We were number one in the Thailand, Bo Thailand, and Bolivia. <laughs> she had like thousands of downloads from Bolivia. Because they don't know what I'm saying. That's why they loved you. Like this redhead is is talking about crazy movies. Me and Sam's friend Desiree yeah. watched it too, but um, we did it one time. So even though we don't do it anymore, whenever we see each other, we're like. For one in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can watch the uh, first one tonight on YouTube if you can't get it. Um, I guess we should probably get to the movie, right? Yeah, yeah. we should. <laughs> I'm so, so excited um, for you guys to see it. Yeah, oh, wait, we didn't it. ask. First time viewers, are there any first time viewers out there? Let us know of if you are waxwork virgins. Yes, let us know if you, if if you haven't been first waxed. Time, long time. <laughs> first time, long time. Yeah. Brazilian or no Brazilian? Least, I've watched this at least four times with my wife. This is a once or twice a year movie, though, for her. So, 
Not as much as Halloween 2 or Maniac Cop, mm-hmm. but pretty often. I haven't seen this since the time I rented it on VHS, probably in 1993. This was also like a stay-at-home, like on the couch if you're sick movie. Like, pop this one in. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It would make you feel better? Yeah. Oh, man. I'm excited. couple of first-timers. Dustin has rented it numerous times on VHS. Yeah, I knew I liked that. Yeah. Let's see, Dan's first time watching it. Wow. You'll thank me later. <laughs> I always think, I don't know if you do this, but I always think people are their icon. So I always, when Dustin talks, I'm like, oh, that brain is talking to me. <laughs> me too. I've told you yeah. before how I get people confused with their handles their online and their, their yeah. alternate profile pictures. All right, guys. All well, right. Come back in a bit. We'll let you know when to come back. We'll watch this, and then we'll watch a, a, a grimy TV movie with a lot of murder. Like, I can't wait. Yes. Yeah. The who, movie who is... knew that we picked father and son directors? That was complete and Carradine kiss... Cinema Night. And Carradine Cinema Night. Complete kismet. Uh, yeah. So pretty exciting. We picked the right ones. Becca wants to show. Her dream movie to show is, what is it? Uh, no Way to Treat a Lady. But it's yeah. not streaming anywhere, and she loves that movie. So, so that... the powers could be be yeah that right. and the bad seed or two like i love that show. movie so much i'd pay for you all to watch it i don't know if that's possible but yeah we'll have our own screening party it's special you yeah. have to donate to bill and sam's community <laughs> and i will buy the movie for everyone to watch <laughs> we'll play it at the drive-in for everybody all right so uh the movie's streaming free on tubi and it's also on youtube so go watch the flick come back afterwards we will be here on another live stream lots more to talk about for waxwork 2 and setting up our second movie tonight on the drive-in asylum double feature see you later